Welcome back to Eat Meat and Question Everything, <laughs> season two. Season two. Drum roll. Um, yeah, so things are changing a little bit. I'm so <laughs> nervous right now. Why are you nervous? Oh, gosh. And if you're only listening to this, come watch the shenanigans on YouTube. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, season two, we're on the floor, apparently. We've been, we've lost budget, our chair budget. I always sit on the floor. Um, so season two, things have changed. Devin is no longer a co-host. Um, it's just going to be me, Courtney. <laughs> writing solo sometimes and then having people on but you look like you want to say something <laughs> i'm okay. just here for the ride <laughs> um this is my vision and i'm still like figuring it out because i don't know exactly but i want it to be a little bit more conversational because we've always done just like guest interviews which is right. great because that's how people learn but i have things i want to say too so i wanted it <laughs> to be like we are just hanging out shooting the shit and people that are watching and listening are a fly on the wall or a fly on the shit as we're a shooting the, well i said shooting oh. the shit so you know what so that's just kind of the vibe i'm going for and to expand a little bit more from carnivore so it's not just carnivore related carnivore lifestyle like i don't even know so welcome to this journey of i don't know what this podcast is going to be about um but that's what we're doing. So Let's I figure no better than having Mr. Jeffrey Luna on the first episode to kick things off and figure out what Let's the hell kick everything. What the hell we're doing. All right, what are we doing? I don't know. Okay. Say so, hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um <clears throat> so for this one I did ask I asked the audience. The audience, you pulled the audience? I pulled the audience, put a question a question box in there, like, what do you want to hear from us today? And I got from some us? things. Yeah. They from, knew this one was us and they wanted to they, hear from us. They knew it was a Jeffrey Courtney mm. podcast episode. And so we got we got a lot of good stuff. I, I grabbed a handful from the options. And let's just dive into it. Let's go. Are you ready to dive? I have no idea what these are. I know. Oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'll add. I didn't want to prep Jeff in any way. <laughs> Great. I don't know why. I just thought it'd be a little more fun to be like, hey, this is what I'm going to ask you what let's we're going to talk about. Okay, the first one, it's funny. Was you can't it say it's funny. well it's not funny, but it's just <laughs> ironic. Was it tough to get Jeff on board with Carnivore? Is this a question for me? <laughs> this is what someone was asking. Okay. And this is where you chime in and say, It was all my idea. This is my fault. It was all my idea. Yes. So um <clears throat> No, I well I sent you those videos. So I sent you uh was it Paul Saladino? Saladino? Just TikToks, a bunch of videos about vegetables <laughs> and meat and kind of that whole thing. And then for like a month. Was it a month? Before we even we... talked about it. Yeah, you never said I never <laughs> I never said anything. I just watched them and I'm like, that's so interesting. And then one day I'm like, why are you sending me these? Yeah. Well, yeah, it was interesting. It was okay, the extreme, right? The not that he was saying vegetables are trying to kill you, but just you don't need vegetables eat meat lots of meat and it's got everything um listed off a bunch of issues and different things that have been solved by this and so it's like hmm interesting sent that to you and then once you questioned it then we're like should we do it and we said sure so i went straight <laughs> carnivore uh you couldn't handle that so you ate a bunch of blueberries every day <laughs> So you were animal based. Yeah, because my looking back, my little sugar addicted brain was yeah. not ready to give up that sweetness. And yeah, so I was mindful with the carbs. I kept it like under 50, 75. I was. I was tracking my macros. <laughs> okay. I was still trying to like be mindful of that. But yeah, after like five weeks, I'm like, dang, I still want fruit after I've already eaten a yeah. pound of ribeye. Like I wasn't even hungry and I just wanted that. So that's when I stopped. But yeah, all this, where I am today, this is all <laughs> Jeff's fault. <laughs> He's the one that got us here. But yeah. Yeah. And that's it. That's, that's it on that's that topic. That, yeah, that was simple. That was easy. <clears throat> okay. Here's a topic I get asked a lot about. And I'm I'm hesitant to ever like share my thoughts and opinions on this one specifically. I, I want to go there. <laughs> well, no, we, I, we can because here's the <laughs> disclaimer. If you don't want to hear our thoughts about it's about homeschooling. If you don't want to hear our thoughts about it, if maybe you'll you'll feel triggered because your kids do go to school, then skip ahead. 
that's why I don't share anything on social media because it would be boom in their face. And I don't want to do that. Because well, there's ways to navigate I just that meant if, because you send me TikToks, if I were to share those in my stories, it, it's just right. boom for everyone to see. And I don't want to hurt any of my friends feelings. We have a lot of close friends that send our kids to school and that's great. Well, yeah, everybody. I know. But so that's why I don't want to offend anybody that's doing that. So here's your disclaimer to fast well, forward. I don't care about offending anyone. It's just <clears throat> what we do. I know, but and the why behind it, I get asked. So like, why Again, are you it's, well, it's all about the delivery. Okay. Well, that's this why, is, this is why I'm asking you. This is why you're not allowed. <laughs> she's not allowed service. to handle any customer service of any issues. We would have no power. We would have no <laughs> gas, no water. We'd be living in a hovel if she was left to her devices to actually handle any type of discernment. Yes, which is why I am finally talking about this topic and you get to answer because the things that you send me with like about like why school was started so and the Rockefeller, the but that's it. Like like just <laughs> touching on like uh, repeat well, like what cuz you would explain it better. Like the whole Rockefeller thing and oh, yes, please. <laughs> well, I was just trying to let you know what I want to hear you from you. You let me about. know the explanation that I would do better. Okay. Um again, there's there's layers and levels to it. So the top layer and top level would just be, you know, fortunately, your home. So, you know, you don't work an outside full time job. So you are a stay at home mom, you're able to do it. So that's the first thing. And I know a lot of people can't and they can't and want to or can't and don't want to. So whatever the case is. So again, this isn't judgment or shaming. It's just what we do because we're able to. Now, the reasoning behind that. <laughs> This is a video too. Can you stop scratching your arms in your way? You're the one doing kung fu talking over here. <laughs> I didn't know we were bringing our gallons. Yeah, you can in. have beverages. It's okay. okay. I know you've got a whole <laughs> litany here, and I'm here in the Sahara. Should I get a sip of my coffee? <laughs> so. Okay, carry on. So, the reasoning being. You know, we send them out there six hours a day, eight hours. What are you doing? You're, <laughs> I, you're I mean, side eyeing. You need to look at the camera sometimes, oh, okay. I think, just to like, oh. so they can feel a little included. Um, yeah. So, to that point, sending them to six hours, eight hours a day to a school when, well, I'm gone anyway, but you're here with them. So, they can be spending more time at home, in our view, in my view, learning more about the real world uh, experiences and learning that way, especially preschool, kindergarten, even the young elementary ages of school, you're not really quote unquote learning a lot, especially if you're there for six hours, you might have an hour of learning, quote unquote. It's um, play based at that age. Yeah, it, it's play based, even in elementary school. And so that's one side of it. You also don't have control over what they're learning and how they're learning it, who they're learning from. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there um, that we don't necessarily agree with. Uh, but it's, it's beyond that. It's, you know, the whole, I mean, dating ourselves or dating myself, but how to balance a checkbook is the example, right? No, we're not balancing checkbooks, but it's, it's still the same principle. You know, they're not learning. And I know we're talking about right now, young age kids, right? But still, they're not learning about real money, finances, government, taxes, um, how to run a business, how to start a business, how to do, you know, I believe bringing the old school of home ec back, whether it's, you know, boys and girls, home economics, learning about that stuff, learning about how to run a home, household, cars, maintenance, woodwork, kind of all that stuff and real, real world applications. So, and the fact that they don't need to be gone that long, you know, when you focus on what you need to learn, you can do it an hour a day or even when, um, they're a little bit older, even in high school, two to three hours a day. And you can go on and on. And then you can also follow where they want to go, what their aptitude is. You know, um, I forgot who said it, but they said something about, you know, if your kids uh, uh, excels at art and is having trouble with math, you get them an art tutor. I'm totally butchering that. <laughs> no, no, I've heard but, that too. Yeah. Now they still need to learn certain things, but 
you it was kind of like the unschooling thing is like you lean into what they're good at and interested right. in and really like nurture yeah. that and of course yes they do need to like learn some math so you don't just like avoid all that but yeah i've seen what you're thinking about and i'm the worst to reiterate things yeah. i've heard and it's like and i i totally because i love school i love school high school call i love learning and, and that whole thing and you know this oh when am i going to use trigonometry and all this crap right well yeah you unless you're going into that particular field you may not particularly particularly use that but it's the the whole thing it's the process of learning the process of learning something that open you know opens up your um, synapses and you learn how to learn and you learn processes and troubleshooting and that sort of thing and so that is important but wrapping around to all of that um yeah, that, that's why we do it. it. It gives them more time home instead of just shipping them off to an institution. And now we can go down the rabbit hole of, you know, where this came from. Uh, the Rockefellers implemented this as an old Prussian uh, system of school to he wanted workers, not thinkers. And if you think about it, it's like things are a little different now, but for the longest time, factory workers, it, everything was a nine to five. You punch your clock in and out, just like school. You know, they and they schools, prisons, you're lined up. Um, you can't have your own thought process. Now, again, I'm speaking to the 80, 90 percent of it. Everyone said, oh, not, not my teacher, not this, not that. Yeah, that exists. And that's great. But for the most part, it's you're taught to pass a test. You're not taught to learn. You're not taught to think for yourself. Um, and so those are all the reasons and, and just real world. I mean, we can take them out. We have the liberty to go travel. They can learn things. They can go to museums. We can do all sorts of stuff on our own. They can learn agriculture. They can learn planting and digging. They can learn building things. They can, and they can do, they're going to do their math. They're going to do their science through real world, real world experiments and learning on their own. Boom. Okay. So that's it. Shakalaka. <clears throat> okay. Next up, the cold <laughs> plunge. Yes. P yeah. People are like, are you still doing it? Not as often, and... Keep going, no, I was gonna chime in. <laughs> the only reason um, is because we haven't gotten a, I don't know, official, a, a real cold plunge right now. We still have the inflatable tube one, or the inflatable yeah. one, which doesn't have the chiller. <clears throat> and so it's either buy ice, which right now gets really expensive, or make it. And we got the, the Tupperware things, but it's just, it's a hassle. It takes like 36 hours to freeze everything. So that's a two day period. And if you don't freeze them right when you do it again. So even at the most, you're getting two or three a week and you've just gotten lazy on it. Well, it's not even lazy. <laughs> Maybe you don't even know that our, both of our freezers are full of meat. I bought a quarter cow. So, well, maybe that's why I, so, I went there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's not even space. Uh, <laughs> there's no space to make yeah. those ice cubes. Um, so yes, having the inflatable one and doing your own ice is not ideal. I think it was a great way to start out to see if we actually want to do yeah. this. I mean, don't drop $4,000 on a tub, like definitely try this blow up one. Um, but we need to, like, <laughs> <laughs> we need to get back at it because it really is life changing, no. like, well, and instant gratification, which I'm huge about, like you would get that from, there's no like, oh, like you lift weights and you have to wait months to see the results. Like you I get that pump immediately, but you know you what I mean? You it. instantly feel those results from cold plunging. Right. Well, I did it in Tahoe. <laughs> oh yeah. I went into the lake. I almost there. called you Archer. What's your name? Jeff, um, went into Lake Tahoe. Like 30, I never shared degrees. the video. I meant to do that in my stories. Uh, but yeah, no, I, um, well, we need to find a sponsor. Yeah. Can someone send me a tub and a chiller, please? Cause <laughs> the chiller we really need. Well, yeah, that's like a thousand dollars just to freaking yeah. We could chill the blow up one. Right. If we had a chiller for that, they make them. We sort of could do that one. But <clears> the <throat> problem is you have the hoses that company makes one now made for chillers where it has the bottom input and out because you need an inlet and an outlet for that okay but uh yeah so love uh the cold plunge you feel great doing it you can go into the litany of benefits uh, mobilizing brown fat you can lose some weight you get the endorphins um it's a, and at the end it's a stressor and this goes back to the whole general wellness of you know you stop moving you die i mean people you know fitness hasn't really been a thing you can argue in the 70s it sort of was but not really that was just more the aerobics but 
you know, the whole thing, the Golden Girls. I mean, the cast of Cheers, they were all in their, like, 30s. And they looked, oh, Golden Girls. Golden were Girls. Because, what, they were, like, 50 or yeah. something, but they looked, like, 80 yeah. or 90. And, you know, because, for the most part, I mean, general health, or health in general, smoking, drinking, as someone declined and, and were generally healthier, uh, not with weight. Um, it's funny. We were a lot thinner and f more fit back then, but not healthy in other ways because they didn't, we didn't have to work out. They didn't have to consistently do that. And so when you don't, you stop moving, you stop doing things, um, you age more. And what was it? Again, I forget who said this, but um, might have been, what's his name? Brecca. But I think he was quoting somebody that aging is the um, consistent pursuit of comfort. Hmm. Okay. Something like that. So, yeah, it's comfortable to lay in bed. It's comfortable to sit on the couch. It's comfortable to not go to the gym. It's comfortable to not be in 20 degree water. Yeah. It's comfortable to not be in 200 degree sauna. Yeah. Those are comfortable things. But comfort is atrophy. Yeah. And so, whatever stressors to mimic the stressors of, you know, cavemen or, you know, a long time ago when we were out there. So working out, yeah, we get a physical and visible thing. Oh, let's look good, you know, aesthetically, you know, we want to peacock to the, um, whoever we're trying to attract. And um, also we're healthy about it. It's a stressor, you know, running a marathon's a stressor, lifting weights, you're putting a stress on your muscles. And that's when growth happens when yeah. you're in discomfort. Yes. And mentally too and so uh sauna it's a physical stress and it's a mental stress staying there cold plunge physical stress mental stress to not jump <laughs> your ass right out of there when you get in there schooling learning in general is a stressor it's easy to not learn mm -hmm. but to actually you know and that's how you know, whenever this might be my you know add brain but you know i just come across something that i don't know and i'll go down that rabbit hole for a few weeks or a few months. No, seriously, Jeff <laughs> knows, I, I won't even say a little bit about everything. You know a lot about everything. You know a, a lot. lot of, you know a lot of stuff. Yes, and that's because, I mean, I just, Like, I don't even know I how you retain it, because you could tell me something and then I couldn't like regurgitate that information. Well, because I, I go, you know, they say 10,000 mm -hmm. hours and become an expert on something, right? And I don't spend that much time on, on everything, but, you know, maybe a thousand hours, because I'll go and I'll, in this day and age, YouTube University, I'll go through and I'll watch hundreds of, you know, videos on something and I'll watch them multiple times and how to's and uh, pull up articles and I'll read and I'll just kind of get that. And then it, and it's not all retained, it goes, but then it comes back again. So that's a stressor, always learning and trying to improve yourself mentally, keeping that astute. Yeah. Hey, when you're old, you got to do like, so, so, so do you go, what's that called? Sudoku. Sudoku. Well, no, you got to do it before you're old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. So this one's a little not for both of us. It's what was my social media journey? Um, so I feel like I shouldn't just sit here and stare at you. I'm going to look at the camera. Um, I'm actually glad someone brought this up. I think it's, I just love to talk about myself. <laughs> no, but it's like, interesting because obviously like the majority of you guys are here because of carnivore and maybe you think I just started sharing carnivore but that's not the case oh I feel like I got like a little adrenaline dump just having to like talk about myself <laughs> like this I don't know it's weird um but to try and make a long story short I mean I've technically been showing up on social media for like almost 10 years yeah I'd say <clears throat> what's 24 now I mean, even yeah. before it, it was food stuff. So like years ago when I was still on yachts, I shared a little bit. Um, it wasn't much. I wasn't consistent. Yeah, I'd say about 14, 15. <clears throat> and then I left the boats and I had a thriving macrame business. And this was after, <laughs> well, did I start when Archer, when I was pregnant with him? I can't remember if I started then or after, but I had a very successful um, macrame business um where i sold a lot of things on etsy i was um had i what's the word i'm looking for like i was active on social media yeah you're active on social media um, very and you're consistent doing and tutorials and you're doing <clears throat> yeah so opal and sage um it's still out there the the <laughs> followers like are 
they they're what's like dwindling. going they're dwindling yes because i'm not active i haven't been active yeah. in like years um but it used to be like hot and popping and i stopped doing that and when i was pregnant with hazel remember we were at the apartment and mm -hmm. i started back up with sharing food stuff again and remember we did the YouTube. Cooking. We did YouTube videos um, <laughs> of cooking. Yeah. And Jeff was in there. He was sitting at the bar having a drink, um, kind of chatting to me while I did cooking videos. And we had dabbled in keto and low carb before, but when I was doing this, it was just standard American diet, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, good food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Um, <clears throat> and that that was that. And then we moved to this house and. I, I kind of somehow got back in, I guess after I had her, I got back into low carbon keto. Right. So I started sharing that more. And that's when my handle at the time was the hungry Luna. Yeah. So I went hard on that for a while. Um, <clears throat> very consistently posting. Nobody cared. There was like <laughs> hardly any growth. I will say, okay, no, I did. Is this before I, Gary? <clears throat> Before Gary V. Yeah. And TikTok? No, because I was just going to say, okay. I was on TikTok too because I listened to Gary Vaynerchuk. He said, I mean, he didn't personally talk to me, but listening to his stuff, he's like, you got to get on TikTok. And this was a couple years ago. So I did hit like 35,000 when I was sharing my low carb keto stuff. So that was a <laughs> stop. So that actually, I mean, was probably almost four years ago. Okay. Cause it was like pandemic, like 2020 was when Hazel yeah. was born. Um, <clears throat> so I was doing the low carb they, keto they stuff. take her social security now. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and so I stopped doing what was working for me. Low carb keto, sharing all that, no bad comments. Nobody cared. Hardly any growth on Instagram, like nothing. And then I stopped doing what was working for me. And all along, I'm just sharing my journey with this. Cause I'm just showing up. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to, eat all the things, the whole, like, what are they, the anti-diet culture bullshit. Yeah, it fits I'm like, on your plate or... Yeah, like, <laughs> it, yeah, like, there's no bad foods, you know, those foods don't have morality, like, all foods fit, and I gained 40 pounds in four months. I don't know how you just, like, kindly sat by and watched <laughs> that. There, I mean, we had a couple times I where... I eaten. <laughs> <laughs> we had a couple times where... I mean, it wasn't like it was just all, oh, so happy gaining all this weight. Like, I remember having a few talks with you and you would gently suggest going back to low carb or keto. You're like, that worked for you. And and it just, it took me a while. You kind of have to hit your own rock yeah. bottom and get there. So I'm sharing all this on social media because it's just what I was doing. I'm like, okay, this is what I'm doing now. And so when we found carnivore and decided to give it a try, it was just the next day I'm like, okay, here's what I'm trying today. So it was never intentional to like, be a carnivore right. channel. I was just sharing my journey from keto to eating all the things to now trying this. And it worked. I felt amazing. So I kept sharing it and people lost their damn minds. <laughs> I mean, my TikTok is dead now. Like nobody cares about me <laughs> anymore. But at the time, like to instantly get all that hate. And I didn't follow like carnivore influencers at right. the time. Like Saladino was the only one. And I guess I wasn't looking in his comments. So it wasn't like, like, I feel like nowadays if someone were to start, they were going to be bracing themselves for like hate and, yeah. and all the nasty comments. I had no idea. So when I started getting some action on my TikTok, I was like, wow, like this is gnarly. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's kind of where it went. And now my TikTok's dead and Instagram's doing kind of good. And Instagram, I feel like is my loving community, you know, and yeah. YouTube too, not so much TikTok. It's just, Kind of a weird thing but yeah that was the evolution of my social media journey anything you want to add to that <laughs> no that's that's all correct <laughs> uh, well it looked like you wanted to say something at one point i didn't no. want to like cut you off okay no no all good yeah that's that was it and now you're keep going and now here we are yeah here we are today okay so the next thing was it just said fitness journey so i don't know what we even want to say about that at least for me, I mean, <laughs> my fitness journey, like what fitness journey? Like I've never really been, I've played soccer my whole life, you know, from kindergarten all the way through high school, even after high school in some like adult pickup leagues. Um, but it's, I've always had a love hate relationship. 
<laughs> where's what, the love part? Where's the love? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm getting a little more into it now um, and lifting weights. So we lift, um, try to get some like steps in and we've done some, well, we haven't done Spartans because I haven't. I signed up for one. Yeah, you signed up. <laughs> but years ago, never went. Yeah. And we did a Tough Mudder. We did Tough Mudder. But you're like the Spartan guy. So what's your kind of, what's your fitness journey? My fitness journey? Or just any like thoughts. Like what are you doing? What are you, like I still think we should do another Spartan. Another one. Like I've done it. Yeah, I'm waiting. Um, I don't know what the journey is, but just right now, just we can talk about general fitness. <laughs> just, I mean, throw some things out. What are you doing? You're lifting weights? Lift weights. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up heavy shit and put it back down. There you go. No, uh, I mean... Cardio has its place for cardio, meaning <laughs> heart. Yeah. It's got its place for heart health and having stamina and not getting winded going up the stairs. Uh, you know, the joke is, you know, what do you do to work out? You lift weights. What do you do for cardio? I lift weights faster. Yeah. And <laughs> I know. was actually thinking about not to like cut you off, but I was thinking about the whole cardio topic today, I was actually on the assault bike, which is not something I normally do because I feel like a lot of people are also saying like, you don't need to do cardio. I mean, yes, get your steps in, but like they're kind of poo-pooing cardio and they're just focusing on weights. But as I'm doing this, I'm like, I went for like 10 seconds and I wanted to die. Like everything yeah. was burning. So I'm like, at some point, like we need to be able to be harder to kill. Essentially. Yes. I need to be able to run away from somebody that's trying to get you me. Should, you should be able to run at least a mile and a half, especially if it's, well, you're, not to get away from someone per se, but if you need help, you need to go somewhere, get something. No. And carry your kid. I, you sent me a thing. Like, can you pick up your kid and <laughs> run for help? <laughs> You'd fall down picking, <laughs> just picking up the oh, kid. Oh, come on. Under, I, I don't want to flex on under, camera, but look at these guns. Under baby. stress? <laughs> I don't know. But so, like, I mean, what are your thoughts then on the cardio no, thing? No, so I guess it's less the the old steady state cardio. Jump on and just jog for 45 minutes. Doing that to try and um, lose weight, yeah. Right, so yeah, not as a, <clears throat> as a caloric burn, but like, um, I'm blanking. We were just talking about this earlier. The assault fight? Um, right? Or just doing yeah, like, but, oh, uh, hit? Like hit, sprints yeah. and stuff? Yeah, interval. Interval training. Going really hard 30 seconds off for two minutes or whatever the case is. That's going to build up that heart health. And then I think running. Like, I think, you know, you've got issues with your legs, knees, back, whatever. But, you know, being just doing bike or just doing the, like, elliptical, I think we need to get that stressor of running. Um even if it's just on a treadmill now that has a lot of give as opposed to concrete or track. But yeah, it's a different but movement than... We, you need to be able to just run and bolt and run a mile or a mile and a half. And I think that needs to be thrown in there. Um, but More so like in sprint work? Because I know like Dr. Sean O'Mara is kind of popular yeah. right now with like doing the sprint well, work. Definitely sprint work, but you're not going to sprint a mile. So no. that's the endurance. But gotcha. in, my, in, in my opinion, now if, if again... If you love running, go run, whatever. But um, I think at least being able to run, run, you know, jog, run one to two miles without dying and falling over. Remember we did that? We like yeah. trained ourselves for the mile and then I feel like we were going to do something else or maybe train for it to see if we could do better. Yeah. I don't know if we ever did that second no, one. You stopped. I was very slow. <laughs> yeah. It was hard. But that's, it's those types of things. Like you should be able to do, you know, at least you know five pull-ups or at, at least one pull-up let's start with being yeah. able to hang from the bar for hang, 30 seconds know, <laughs> yeah body weight hang, bar hangs push-ups and this comes down to survivability you know now we can go into a whole nother realm of things of again what happens if you, you you're out with the kids you need pick up two kids and run yeah you know or um you do I don't know, maybe there's an earthquake. Maybe you're somewhere and you fall and you need to hang and hold on. You need to yeah. pull yourself oh, up. Gosh. Going to talk about running a mile to get away from someone. What if you need to get over a fence? Now, yes, adrenaline will kick in, but you need to be able to do these things. That's And that's the functionality movement of um, that part. I do kind of like in CrossFit where you're doing a lot of different body movement, weight things. Now, you got to be careful. You got to go really slow. Um, I think it's got its place on things, but just general strength and power output. Uh, needs to build up, you know, building up bone density, especially you felines, <laughs> the ladies, um, 
you know, lose as bone density. Age. We all lose bone density and muscle as we age. Women do it a, a lot more and a lot sooner than men do. Um, and so it's not only it's healthy, it's you fall down. You know, some people, I forget the statistic, you know, after age 50, if you have a decent fall, you're, you're limping for the rest of your life at minimum. Car accidents. Um, you know, if you're healthy, you got strong bones, you got strong muscles, that's your body suit, that's your protection. And so it's life, fall down off a ladder. It, it's all those types of things that being healthy and fit is going to help you recover from, let alone disease and whatnot, um, and being healthy, being able to get on the floor and play with your grandkids. Yeah. Um, you know, those things that, we, that obviously young, cause young people are immortal and, and vulnerable and <laughs> nothing's ever going to happen to them. So they, yeah. they don't think about <clears throat> that long run. Yeah. Well, when I, and then when I think about that, like I instantly like think about my dad, like I should be doing better, like with having him as an example, like he's 71 and he is in 10 times better shape than I am. Like he can run faster than me. He could lift, I'm sure, even though he probably hasn't lifted that much in a while, but he's just overall like yeah. a fit, healthy no, guy because yeah. he's been doing that his whole life. And it's like, and he hasn't stopped. Correct. That's the thing. If he stopped when he was like, I would say most people who generally work out and get fit, they by 40 ish, 40 to 50s, they usually kind of stop. You know, if you're a runner, you kind of stop. If you're a swimmer, you kind of stop. Um, and that's the thing, it's you don't stop. As long as you don't stop, I mean, there's 80, 90 year old bodybuilders. Yeah. Um, and not just going to the gym and doing, you know, two pound dumbbells and you see those people going through there. That's better than nothing. They're out there. That's great. Yeah. Um, but. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, it's the not stopping. And that's um, my dad, like swim, bike, run. I don't know if he even bikes anymore, but he does do something like almost every day, but he loves it. I feel like that kind of skips a generation, I think, <laughs> yeah. because it's like he can't go a day without doing some sort of and movement. That does make it more difficult if you don't Love enjoy, <laughs> if you don't enjoy the act of working out and doing these different things, that, that does make it more difficult. But also, it's a lot easier to enjoy. Uh, especially a physical activity when, <laughs> when you're when you're already fit mm -hmm. you know if you've got an extra 10 20 <laughs> 50 pounds on you or more doing burpees is not fun running and is not fun you're feeling everything yeah. bounce yeah uh, getting get in the pool and right, is not fun but when you're fit and you can challenge yourself to do better and and you feel good about it because you're in shape it's it's a whole different ball game you're you can actually now if you're someone who does enjoy it, you, you may never like love it and crave it but you can you can enjoy it to an extent when you're fit and doing things and when you can actually run the mile and not have to take 10 breaks and you can actually do the mile mile and a half then so oh, that was kind of fun you know just try to push it a little bit um so i think that's the thing it's you know most people they're out of shape or they let it go and they try to get back into shape and then they go in and out because it's not fun and so if you can get through that, get to a, a fit space, then it's more fun. You know, you look better, you feel better. You can wear the workout clothes. You can uh, peacock. peacock. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Here's the last one. I'm going to kind of just combine it into two. <clears throat> um, budgeting groceries slash someone was asking about like the cost <laughs> of living in California. So just you know, how it's so expensive here, cost of the is groceries. This yes, this was a carnivore. Okay. Um, and Car then like, would we ever move out of California? What does that have to do with anything? Um, what? That's, <laughs> moving my, out of California. that's my question. Okay. They didn't ask that. I mean, if we're talking so, about living here. Okay. On the carnivore side. Say I something. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't believe it's, it's that <laughs> more expensive in comparison because uh, you have to really compare it the correct way. One, you can't or you don't need to be eating ribeyes or Wagyu steak or all these expensive cuts for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I know generally inflation, everything is more expensive. Um, and meat and, and those things are going to be more. Eggs are expensive. Uh, cheese is expensive. All that stuff is more expensive, but everything is more expensive. Now, a couple things. One when you go into carnivore, 
you're you're not eating all the other crap. So now that stuff is less expensive, but it's still a bulk of what you're getting. So that's gone. That budget towards that's gone. Um, also, you're not eating as often. You know, people are used to... <laughs> that sounded... That pe- often. <laughs> often. <laughs> people are used to eating three meals and three snacks. Yeah. So the snacks are gone. Yeah. Uh, for the most part. That also being said, it's in, everyone's budget's different. You can do it off of those 10 pound tubes of ground beef um you know which are like two dollars a pound at yeah you you can you can get that and then do a steak once a week or a couple times a week or whatever it is but and again if this is if you're doing this because of like actual real health issues or or something like that you know do it do what you need to do it's hard when you're not necessarily facing like a harsh medical issue autoimmune or something like that you just you know you want to lose a little bit of weight so it's it's hard if you are having budgetary issues but you can go cheap go the cheapest meat only diet's going to be better than the garbage um standard american diet yeah and yes there's arguments that there's better qualities is the antibiotics that go into it and organic and uh farm raised or whatever all that is and yes you could always have the best of this farm rush twenty dollars for a carton of eggs versus you know nine dollars um but i would say start that way if go with what your budget will allow and you'll see that you know maybe at the end depending on what you get it might be a little bit more you might be paying like 10 percent more um but, but pay now or you pay later yeah. with crappy <laughs> there dollars. you go but it's not the people in their mind they're like oh well i'm paying a thousand dollars a month for groceries right now and if I have to add, you know, 30 steaks a month, well, now I'm going to be paying $2,000. It doesn't work that way. So you remove everything. Now, again, if you're a family, not everyone's on it. Now you're still paying mostly of all that other stuff. If you're the only one doing it, you know, there's a lot of factors, right? Okay, maybe that part just drops down the junk that you're eating, but they're still eating all that other stuff. So that still is in the budget. Now you're going to have to go up. So yeah, if you're one person in a family of four or five that's doing it, it might go up a higher percentage than others. But circling back, go cheap if you need to. Ground beef, burger patties, buy in bulk if you can. Buy uh, a portion of a cow. Yeah. Get a quarter cow or a half cow or go in on it with someone and, you know, do a full cow or, or whatever. So, yeah, it, it can be done. Um <laughs> And it's not as bad as it seems that it is if you do it. What was the other part of that? <laughs> Just like the cost of living and, and all that with being in California. Well, yeah, I mean, California is, it's California. It's California, New York, San Francisco, you know, all these places, Chicago, um, any big city, uh, Austin. Um, yeah, it's expensive. <laughs> yeah. and, and there's a the whole litany of reasons behind that. Uh, I do love California. Um, I'm not against moving out. I would even potentially like to move out of state at some point. Um, it would just need to find the right situation. Where would be, I mean, I know we kind of have talked about this in the past, but we haven't any time recently. Like, where um, would you be open to going? More places than before. Um, open to Texas, open to Tennessee. Yeah, um, I hear Nashville is amazing. But even like... Uh, like Iowa's good. Um, that's I've actually heard that too. Yeah. Or Iowa or Idaho. One of those. I don't know. <laughs> Idaho. Sure, I'm I'm open to a lot more places. Yeah. Um it's just trying to find that balance of the weather. Um, we have it so good here. The weather yeah. is good and it's not so buggy. That would be my thing about yeah. moving somewhere else. Like I've been to Texas. It's great, but ugh, chiggers or just, I'm not a buggy person. Like yeah. I don't want to move somewhere and like have to worry about ticks. I feel like that's like yeah. a big thing, especially with them, like injecting them with lime. Like <laughs> I, I don't want to be like skeeved out somewhere. Yeah. So again, it's just, and there's plenty of places that are close enough to what we have here. So it's open. <laughs> oh, it's open. Our parents are listening. You know, they're all going to have to go with us too. Yeah, at some point. So. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else you want to add to this lovely conversation? (laughs) Anything you want to bring to the table before we wrap it up? The table on 
Carnivore? Anything. Health, wellness. Um, words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. Stop being lazy. All right. <laughs> Me or is this a general? I, I said what I said. <laughs> no, um, look, uh, and I'm not the bastion of this. Uh, I have to remind myself all the time, but, you know, excuses are bullshit. <clears throat> At, at the end, at the end of the day, you know, you know, oh, an hour is four percent of the day, right? That's a cliche. There's always time, and I get it. You know, I work a lot. You're working a lot doing this. You got the kids. You know, I feel like get up, come home, do everything, boom, 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 and it's you know nine o'clock at night, right? There's always, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. You, you can, make you make time for what's important. You you make the time. You can. Get up early, stay up late. Um, you know, the fitness in setting an example, it's important. I mean, that's our bodies are, you know, we're not, you know, in our sci fi yet, right? You know, we're not transferring our consciousness <laughs> into robotics and all that. So this is what it is. And, you know, people are you know, dying, getting sick. It's weird, younger and younger now. So, um, you know, everyone says they don't have time. <clears throat> Nobody has time, but they still do it. Yeah. You know, um, so, you know, if you're cr trying to get on this journey and you're trying to do carnivore or something similar to it and you don't want to be sick or don't want to be fat or don't want to be out of shape or whatever, just do it. It's that comfort thing again, you know? Yeah, it's not comfortable to get up at four in the morning and go work out. It sucks. You know, it does. Now, you get into a habit, you get into a pattern, and you'll kind of like it, but it sucks. And was it uh, Rogan? You know, he's big on the cold plunge, too. And he's had a lot of people ask him about it. Does it get better? And he's like, no. He's like, <laughs> it fucking sucks every, every single time. time. Yeah. Every single time. It sucks. Yeah. And it does. Yeah. But you do it. Some it's, things just need to be a non-negotiable. Yeah. Where you just do it. Yeah. What is it? Uh, pick your hard, right? Do you want it yeah. to be hard walking up the stairs because you're 300 pounds? Or do you want to be hard because you're at the gym at four in the morning? Both of those suck. Which one <laughs> <laughs> do you do you want it to be? Yeah. And so, you know, a little bit of a tough love there, smack in the face. But, and myself too. I include myself in that. It's, it's hard to get out of that warm bed if you need to do it in the morning or if you need to stay up late and do it or give up certain things. Give up the foods you like or certain social things. It's, um, you know, some things are permanent and some are temporary, you know, getting to a maintenance, you know, if you need to do what you need to do to get to that point and then test slacking or test letting other things back in, um, you know, you gotta do it. Okay. <laughs> I, I agree. Choose your hard. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right i should have just let you finish yeah. all right thanks so much for being here we'll see you next time